you dream about sailing in tropical waters, you want to spare your own fish and prepare it in the evening on the open fire together with your friends, and then you arrive there and they'll tell you, but beware of ciguatera. Oh, what's that? Watch this interview and Ian will explain it to you. Welcome to Sailor's Life. Today I'm on Afriki, a Vaucuise 43. Ian sails around the world already the second time. First time solo and now with his wife Anne. He loves spearfishing. And today he tells us about ciguatera, the terrible fish poisoning in tropical waters. Everybody fishing in these areas should know about this illness and listen carefully. Hi Ian. Oh, we're on. We're live. We're live, yeah. How are you? Very good. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much that you uh, joined the interview. What are the things you like most about this lifestyle? Is it the Can sailing the part or the traveling part? <laughs> okay. Um, for us, it's definitely the traveling part. I don't like sailing. Like, uh, I like being somewhere. I like being at anchor. I like exploring, you know, swimming and stuff. The sailing, neither of us enjoys. <laughs> so, it's, uh, so we're about the travel and the adventure and, and that part of it. This is a good way to backpack with your house, kind of. And so it took me about 13 years, 14 years of dreaming and saving till I got my first boat and did the five-year circumnavigation. And now it's the second time around. So like I see, you have a lot of solar panels. You shoot your own food, you have a water maker, and you sail with the wind. Do you live a sustainable life? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. We, 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 we make the water. Um, and we use a lot of solar, we have lithium batteries. Uh, yeah, so I guess we live a sustainable life. Um, we do use a lot of engines, so we got diesel, you know, flowing into the water. We got anti-fouling on the bottom of the boat, which is, you know, is not the best for the, for the environment, I guess. But yeah, but I don't really think of myself as an environmentalist or like someone that's, uh, by sailing someone that's really helping the world by sailing. Ian, you told me you're a free diver. Well, I used, I, I'm a scuba instructor. I used, I used to work as uh, that maybe about 30 years ago. So I've done a lot of scuba, uh, but also around maybe 30 years ago, I got into spearfishing. Uh, and as I'm now getting older, uh, in, in Bonaire, I actually thought, well, why don't we work on technique? And I took a free diving course. And what's the main reason doing it? Is it a food supply or is it the exercise? It's a food supply. Like we enjoy eating fish and I enjoy catching fish that I'm eating. But really it's, yeah, it's exercise. It's really my main exercise when we're out here sailing. Uh, and the challenge, I enjoy water's beautiful going out in the sea and the fish swimming around the corals and you know holding your breath for as long as you can and you know trying to get that fish and yeah if somebody wanted to get into spear fishing as a beginner uh you don't want to spend like big bucks you know like a thousand bucks <laughs> like the fancy guns but you don't want a really small gun because you just have to be so close to the fish then to shoot it and as a beginner, you're not, you're just not going to be getting fish. So, you know, some, uh, you can get something like, like this, at least that, that long, uh, and go from there. So that the key thing really to spear fishing is, is learning to hold your breath and stay down there and not, uh, anyways, there's lots of techniques you learn, but certainly one of them is the, the less of this you do down there. If you just stay still, less you know the less body movement, muscle stuff, the longer your air supply will be. Farther away we are from civilization or a village, it's certainly better because uh, closer to where people are, they're all out fishing too. So there's so there's less fish. If you shoot fish, do you sometimes have a battle with sharks who also want the fish? I certainly, think of a couple of times where I've shot a fish, shot a grouper like on a reef you know just kind of looking over shooting the grouper and as soon as i shot him the, well the sharks always know is when you shoot a fish then the fish is like you know doing his death dance or it's i'm in trouble dance and sharks know that 
know that dance. And so they come right over. So as soon as I shot this guy, he was doing his dance and bang, there was a shark on him, like eating him. So I had to go over there and like shake, shake my spear and get him off. The, the shark swam away. And there was this American guy that, that came in on his boat and he'd spent the last nine years in the Pacific. But anyways, he said, uh, what you got to do, you know, you shoot your fish and then you go get your fish. You get, you get the spear and the fish and you bring it here and you just swim up, you know, looking out for any sharks or, you know, as he, he would say, pushing them away if there's anything coming. You know? But it's essentially what we did. So we, I went with him and we went into the pass in Suvorov and there was easily 20 sharks swimming around us, mostly black tips, but there was a couple of greys. And we were spear fishing, and, you know, we'd come up and we'd, we'd put it in the, in the dinghy. Um, but there was one gray shark that came like right over, like, what are you guys doing? And I had to poke him in the nose to, and you know, then he, he left. But, but so that was 15 years ago and I, I was a bit of a younger man. And I don't know if I'll do that now. Here in the tropical waters, we have this illness called ciguatera. Can you explain that? Uh, yes. Well, ciguatera is a sickness. It's a, it's a toxin that, that grows on uh, the reefs or algae that are on the reefs and smaller fish eat it or fish eat that and then bigger fish eat those smaller fish and so they get, they get this toxin and they get the, the ciguatera toxin but it's not it's not everywhere it's only some places so now I asked the locals and I and I mean local locals like in this bay uh, or as, as, as much as I can do that um, What's, what can we shoot? Like, what doesn't have ciguatera? And they're, and they're, you know, they're very aware of ciguatera. And so they'll tell me, you know, grouper, uh, like brown grouper, not the red grouper. Uh, parrotfish everywhere seem to be okay. And anything offshore, any pelagics uh, are fine that, that aren't feeding off the reef. If you get it, I mean, it can be fatal. Like, people do die of it. In, in Vanuatu, I shot like a very, nice grouper but then I realized when I I was having a beer a cold beer it felt hot and so one of the things about ciguatera if, if you get it a, a normal thing not always but that hot is cold and cold is hot so the, the beer was hot and my lips were tingling and yeah, and the achiness but after two days it went away I think like everybody can hear on the background noise we are in the marina in the middle of Papete so why are you in the marina? I don't have the feeling that you are persons who like the marina. Yeah, and I mean, it, it is nice being in the marina, like in the middle of town and going to get uh, chocolate croissants in the, in, in the morning and stuff. Um, but we're here because we've been having uh, transmission issues. Uh, again, referring back to saying before, sailing around the world is fixing your boat in exotic locations. Oh, having problems on the boat sometimes or often or whatever does that put you off sometimes it puts me off yeah <laughs> i mean i'm a guy so i the last the last six seven years before before we left i had a renovations company a general contractor so i like working with my hands i like being busy i'm i'm good at it uh you know i, I sailed around the world before and so like solo so you're you're always fixing things and if you don't know how to fix things you learn how to fix things and getting people on your boat to fix things is something I avoid as much as I can. Uh, so these guys coming on doing the transmission, the transmission is not something I can take apart myself and put back together. Yeah, I, I don't like it sometimes, but in, in the big picture, it, it's good. Like I, I say, like in the when bad things happen on the boat in in the micro, I don't like it. Like it's like oh god, it's three in the morning, we're sailing, this is busted. I got to go down there and look and fix it. You know, oh man, you know. Um, but in the macro. I enjoy it because it we have to on a sailboat on the ocean you have to keep your you have to work to keep yourself alive in a sense so like the boat's sinking or that we're not sailing or there's a problem you can't call in sick you can't say yeah you know what I'm I'm not doing it today it's like no you're doing it and you're doing it right now I guess I don't have to ask you if you ever regretted choosing this lifestyle if you're doing it already the second time so yeah, no regrets, certainly. So our plans are we're here for the next month and then try and make it back up to the Marquesas for the hurricane season, but also just because we really love the Marquesas. 
and would like to get back up there. So that's that's our plans. And then next May, take off west and maybe go up through the Philippines, but we'll see. All right. Great. Thank you very much for talking to you. Very welcome. If you have any more questions that we haven't discussed yet, please write them in the comments so that I can ask my next interview partners about them. Subscribe my channel Sales Life if you want to hear more facts, experiences and stories. Give me a thumb up and press the bell if you don't want to miss any of these informations.